I think the most important thing to remember about the uh, biography was um, I found that math and um, finance was a bit of a language, a science or a language, and to be able to study those things, get qualified in them, means that you can then translate the arts, humanities, uh, community to financial institutions, to procurement officers, to planning departments. And when all else fails, give them a hug. <laughs> so, so while I can speak a few languages and I have a few degrees, it actually means that I'm just trying to translate. And I think the most important thing is I was trying to study so that I could structure well-being into communities. And repowering um, has come together through work that I've done with um, many community leaders, uh, particularly in Brixton, but um, I'll share a hub, I guess, today, with leaders across the nation, Barbara and Dan being some of them who I've had the privilege to work with over the last few years, just being able to bounce those ideas. Because the truth of the matter is, is we are breaking new ground. Repowering is talking about creating local energy. Um, and we did seven things that had never been done before. And so when you do that, councils are terrified. The government doesn't know what to do. Uh, they, you know, you start getting um, no's. Most of the time I hear no. Well, actually all the time I hear no. Um, but now um, I'm beginning to hear, sweet Jesus, yes, but I have no idea how to do it, so come and sit down. So I'm going to leave here and go to the EU, to Brussels, to talk about how the OJU rules that we, and state aid rules that are being used now against us in the Community Energy Contact Group from the national government of the UK um, can then be tweaked from, a, from, a, from an EU perspective to then make it more digestible and palatable and say, okay, here are the certificates, here are the documentation, let's make this work. So to give you an idea of what repowering is, it's really about trading local energy in its two forms, about community energy and uh, renewable energy. But that community energy doesn't just start with uh, the local people that are around you. It starts with just like you can come and get there. I know people here as far from away as from Scotland, um, the outer Hebrides down to just the bits of Wales that takes just as long to get here from it does it take from Scotland. <laughs> But um, I'm, I'm very proud to be here, and I just wanted to make that clear that that community engagement element uh, doesn't just mean the community that's in your local neighborhood, your neighbors, uh, but the one that we're creating, the hubs that we have. Um, and so I'll just give you an overview of what we're trying to, try to do. And of course, I'll go over Brixton Energy, which was a, really a pilot model, which uh, I worked with um, a few people to develop, so that we could then roll that out. It's really been used. Uh, by repairing to try to use that, but also by many of um, you uh, can use it as examples to say to your local council, look, they did this in Lambeth, they've done this in, in, and it works, so let's try to do it again, because we are breaking new ground. This was the first lease agreements on social housing in the UK uh, for, a re uh, for a renewable energy cooperative. Um, so these are, these are sort of groundbreaking moments, and then now other councils are going, I have no idea that we are allowed to do that, Oh, it's been done before, you can do it. Here's an example. So that's what we put into the Community Energy Contact Group's uh, call for evidence, which then we installed that into, or distilled some of it with many other groups into the um, Community Energy uh, at call for evidence, which then has now come out in, in January. So what we currently are doing, um, the vision and services and experience. So. Um, Right off the bat, we felt it was really important to say to be a, a nonprofit cooperative um, because you will see, as it's just, just like starting now uh, to happen, people coming in and wrapping things in a charitable, nice, maybe uh, green wrapping or lots of hugs on the wrapping paper. Uh, but actual delivery of it will be a very straight financial return to a few people. Maybe they'll say community, but it won't necessarily be community. Um, that's not to say that the sector is lying, but it's just to say that financial returns somehow create a very different strain of, uh, of business. And so we can create viable financial companies uh, that have returns to local communities. So we felt it was very important to embed that from the outset instead of a, a cooperative um, that helped others to facilitate. So to be access to the med medium or liaison between councils and the private sector and government and support um, these community 
to develop community-owned new energy projects. Um, the team is made up of uh, dedicated employees. We do have um, volunteers on the on the program as well. And the so if someone asked Barbara before how many people are employed because in the end of the day, I'm sure a lot of you are putting in huge amounts of volunteer time. Um, we have uh, two full time and we have seven part time, and um, and then we have about three more who are doing work pro bono volunteer time, but they, for certain reasons they can't accept money in this that they've got great experience and come from the sector, the finance sector, the energy sector. So, um, the next slide. What we've been operating with is, is pretty much, I think, becoming straight, simple to everybody, which is that you all come together in a, in a, a PS or a, a kick or a charity, um, but under that is that's one member of one vote. We haven't broken into having separated votes for individuals who can't invest. We've just reduced the amount that they can invest. So we have 50 pound to share. Um, you can invest from 50 pounds in any of the cooperatives. And the way that we included any of the social housing programs into it fully, we <coughs> said a share of the co-op will be allocated to the, the, R, the, the social housing, RSL, TMO, um, tenant management organization, um, social landlords, given to them, and therefore they can all vote. Anybody in the, in the um, housing club could then vote and then have that say. And what we're finding is that as opposed to taking a 50 pound share, they're taking two to 10 to 15,000 pounds, putting that in this investment, and then giving, allocating individuals to shares. And the individuals from these low income housings are, are actually becoming share members themselves because having skin in the game seems to be one of the most important things. And people think, for some reason, that people who don't have that much money don't want to spend it or don't have it. But this <coughs> seems to have such value in communities that actually, and I'll show you in a few moments, everyone does want to invest and finds it very condescending to say that they don't have the money to invest. So we have to really rethink what we think about the people that we are trying to help. That's what I think maybe I want to bring up as today. Um, so go back to that before we going. So they, they come together to install this cooperative. And the returns from whether it be um, hydro or solar or um, CHP, any renewable technology, is you're going to have dividends and then a, a subsidy from the government for you know, your, in the form of a feed tariff or a renewable incentive or a rock renewable obligation. But, um, that will then be able to run your system. And we've basically allocated 20% of all of the cooperatives that we've done so far, which I'll show you, as well as all the projects we're working on now. I'd say 20% of that goes to a community fund. Um, I've been really trying to, along with our team, to devise a mechanism that would distill what is delivered to communities. How we can make sure these projects don't just live in the arena of middle class, well off people investing in a project and getting a return in it and they feel that they're a community and therefore it's, as someone said earlier, only about 20 people. Um, with a, this is trying to incorporate all the community and then uh, break it into all the different sectors, the vulnerable, the elderly, youth, um, people who are looking to reskill as adults, young people in community employment. So, um, they, so that 20% of the revenue goes to that, and then the administration costs <coughs> and pay to the shareholders. And because of that, people will invest in it. So there's this, this idea that when we're going on to a state, so repairing works particularly with um, low income in the states of super output areas, you're talking about people who are um, spending 10 to 50% of their, and above, of their annual income on heat, heating, so they're in fuel poverty. Um, there were in land where we, we began our first few projects, um, and we have now have partnerships in developing their multiple projects. Uh, they have 60 to 160 people that die every year from cold-related uh, influences. And on the Loughborough Estate, it's one of the largest estates in Brixton uh, or in Lambeth, it has the largest, highest amount of uh, fuel pump-related fuel pump -related deaths, and that's where we began our journey. Uh, there's 5,000 people that work on these days, so I think it's a good example of uh, what I want to illustrate here. Um, we all understand that getting people engaged is difficult. Um, you can put leaflets to the door, you can even have a phone call with everyone you can. Um, a lot of people on these estates don't even have phones. Uh, they don't have bank accounts. 
uh, and many of them aren't even there legally, but they are suffering from <coughs> poverty all the same and choosing between food and heat. It sort of brings it home slightly and it makes it a lot easier for me because I live next door <coughs> and have uh, this experience of saying, okay, all these models don't work. How do we engage with our community and how do we change this paradigm? So it's yes, it does. You do make phone calls, you do use flyers, you do your best, but you get on to the ground and you use the volunteers to knock on doors and you go to every single door, you create grid patterns and you knock on those doors and go around at least four times to try to get input from the community about what people want. Once you do that, you begin to develop your core. So you're going to have a few people, I'd probably say about eight in your group. In that first meeting, you're probably going to have two. It might bump up to eight and ten, but you'll, you'll have that core group. And as you start to go around knocking on doors, you end up getting that volunteer pool, and you have 60 people or so who start to really rock through these estates. And that is very important in the engagement process of what I'm going to demonstrate to you. Because all the technologies in the world and all the goodwill in the world does not address what the problem is, and then it doesn't come up with a solution because the people who are here on these states, the people who are in your local communities, are not a problem. They are experiencing difficulties which have been developed by larger systems. So we need to rethink those systems and flip it over so that these people who have all the knowledge and passion and experience to come up with their own solutions have an avenue to develop that and deliver it over the life of this renewable really energy project. So this complex slide just shows, much like Barbara's did, except mine's more wordy, and I'm going to definitely change this to make it look this is like it's Barbara's. Um, just shows how the delivery model is that just when we go out there saying the aims of, is to really identify with community and to create well-being. Uh, to deliver that, we're going to set up properties and you know the vehicles will be energy projects. The cooperative, which lives on itself. And you're all setting up properties and you've all heard of those properties today. Um, and, but the, the stakeholders have to include everybody from the residents. And I'm not, I'm not teaching self so, okay, so, so The mechanism to talk to all your stakeholders and to make sure they're all included is face-to-face. -face. And it takes time, but it, it does that. So your stakeholders will include the council, and it will include um, the schools and companies that are around there, but it will also include um, the residents. And you need to engage those for them. When you do that, and then you, and you make sure that there is a full-on engagement process, we run a six to eight month engagement process prior to the installation of the program. Um, and you realize, I'm sure many of you, with these 11 year programs for getting hydro running, you could probably run an 11 year engagement process. But um, we were running a, a 30 week internship program with finance, IT, technical, legal, of what's going on. Um, and, and then what that ends up happening is that you really begin to include people in all of what we call problems. All of us have died. Planet's a problem. Um, you know, the government's a problem. And you use those to illustrate the system design that we are now working with. It's what it is. It's a system. It's a language. You just have to learn the language. So then you learn the language, and then you start to make it your own. Well, you take this word. <coughs> I mean, what in Welsh is the word for uh, um, uh, microwave pingity pong? I mean, you come up with your own stuff, right? So you want to bring stuff together and redevelop it and come up with a way better name. That might be automatic, that might be a delivery service that ends up being used elsewhere. I use it all the time when I say I don't want my food to be up in a piggy pond. <laughs> um, so <laughs> then your apples then become uh, very solid and you begin to reduce fuel poverty and you directly deliver the energy um, uh, to and environmental needs and you need to increase um, uh, skills and jobs and change the mindset. One of the major things that's in there is, no, go ahead. Um, and next, I just want to say again. Um, is you can create local leaders. Right now, you guys are local leaders. <coughs> in the area. I can never be a local leader. I might be able to support you in the direction. But then there'll be people that you know who could then become local leaders who are inspired by you, indirectly um, or directly. And what we found by going and talking to people within that, where I started, where I live, um, about this idea of well-being, not about co-ops, not about the, the IPS, not about um, what a return on investment is, what, what do you really need? I need a garden. Uh, uh, my, my son needs a job. Uh, my, my, uh, I need to understand how my um, energy um, thing, oh, and that wall works, but actually, um, 
I couldn't care less because the council pays for it. What I really don't understand is why I'm in debt. I need debt advice. Okay? So that's coming up. So you don't go, oh, it doesn't fit to my boxes. You go, make a new sheet of paper and let's work backwards and see how it works. So we said, all right, people don't really want solar panels on their roofs. They don't even know if it works. That's where we are. So what they do want is they want apprenticeships. They want, they want energy, but they want to not be cold. They want um, to have employment. So how do we include people in those arenas? So we developed a program which then fit in. So we said, okay, we'll give people a way to keep money in a local area. We took bricks and pound, I'm not sure how many of you have heard of bricks and pound, um, or local currencies. Yes, you have, there's plenty, a bunch of you have had them in Wales. Um, it's gotten in over a couple of, the Brixton was a very loud case. Bristol, the uh, Bristol mayor has been really pushing the Bristol pound, and they used a lot of people who worked in Brixton, and just threw away and started against it. How do you apply to Bristol? I totally recommend that. Take everything good out of this presentation, throw it away, and then make it your own. Because the, it's sometimes what I find is the biggest difficulty is trying to work with what we have. Sometimes you can wipe the slate completely and start again and say, how do we develop this? It works quite great deal better. So um, it was addressing serious problems out there. And we delivered those by, by the solicitation process, where you're taking people like Habiba or Joe and saying, OK, you feel that you, you, you kicked out of classes. You don't have a way to, uh, to communicate with um, employers. You don't feel your job opportunities. Um, your parents are kicking out of the house because you don't seem to want to be a part of society. Um, and uh, we include you into a 30-week internship program where you get to learn about finance, the technical, the legal, the structural, and the media elements. Habiba then gets excited about energy, about electrical installation, goes back to school, gets, gets more into engaged in school, goes back, studying electrical engineering, starts working with that, excited about those programs, and then gets placed into a, a full internship program in Ashes and Full Employment with an installation company for energy. She's more interested in electrical engineering, wants to keep going and study. But that was by saying, what's the problem? Not, hey, do you want to be part of a solar panel installation project? Hey, you're part of the youth group. I'm like, I, the first thing, I, you're part of the youth group. How many of the kids in your youth group have not come back? Can I have a list of all the numbers of all those people? Then you say, here's a program, this is what we're working on, do you want to get involved? And then be very strict. If you, you know, policy rule, if you don't come, we won't do this, just show. You're there for them and you're there showing up, and then they come back. Okay, the next one. They come back and they get this, this final moment on the roof and still solar panels, but that's only at week 30. They've had to learn everything, right? They've had to learn about how it works, they had to learn about solar, they had to learn about the energy market, they had to learn about the big sense. They know that, that big companies take the largest amount of return and want it the shortest amount of time, and they will push and shove to get what they need. They understand that. Uh, they use different language. Some language you might understand and use regularly, and some language you would use regularly or want to hear often. But they have a great deal of expletives they use to express that. And they feel that there are no, there is no space for them in society. But once they complete the program, or during it, they are the ones who start to help knock on the doors. You listen to someone who grew up on the state explaining why this person, should, why you, should then be a part of a community energy project. It's very different than what I do. And a lot of it is not my words or any words. It's being communicated by the fact that they were the kids that they saw growing up right now. And they're explaining in that language. And it changes it. It really starts to be a community project and a community program. And when, when Kamal is installing a draft proofing measures into um, in house, very different. Element. I wish she wouldn't let me in there. She wouldn't organize it at a time like that. But he has now gone through uh, 15 weeks. So then he's doing he's done 15 weeks learning about the, the whole process of setting up a root legend co op. Then he's done five weeks alongside professional installers. He goes in with a professional installer and two other um, of the interns, and then they're delivering this. And everybody's running around and talking. The people in the local shops, everybody begins to understand this dialogue, this intergenerational communication begins to become a much more digestible framework for the community. They don't think about it as solar panels. They can put that name on it just like you would, 
but that's not how they talk, they say. Kamal is now, now he's finished his cost rail. He got directly placed into cost rail program for electrical engineering for trains, because he loved that. And he's come back saying, I've got my engineering degree, I want to work for you full time. Can I help to deliver these services? And I say, okay, well, we can't hand it full time now, but we can do these things. But that's the thing, they get excited, they get engaged, they get their local community engaged, and it's a whole different arena. That's why I want to say it over and over again is don't look at these solar panel projects or wind turbines as the end all be all. Look then go back to where you started from. It's, I want to, I'd love to flip my CD around and say, Agamemnon um, uh, Otero, art, fine arts, um, uh, literature, and you know, you know, communications, uh, literature, you know, whatever. Um, then at the end, oh, chief executive, finance director, blah blah blah. Because the community element is what got me here in the first place, and that's what we're trying to do. Um, because that's the reality, that's what gives us the sustenance to survive. The money is just a, the, the, the renewable energy is a technology, it's, a, it's, a, it's an engine to drive us through this program with our community. It's just a very different environment. And all of them, you know, Nadine on the right hand side, she had a real struggle in school. Um, by the end of the program, the third year of the program, she was saying, you know, thank you very much for all this. <coughs> I never want to do this solar panel and solar, I don't want to do energy efficiency. But um, I love writing about the process. We had her she specifically like that. And um, she began to be the chair of, of her women's group. And, and I wrote her recommendation for university, and she's studying to be a teacher now. And Nadine loved uh, Aisha on the other side, really fascinated with media and PR and wanted to set up her own events thing, so we made sure all the events, she was on the team that designed the events for them. And she was one who chose the food now. I would have never chose what she chose to put on the menu. But everybody was very happy with the ribs. And, it, you know, and, and that was her thing. And she was like, oh, and, 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 and the, because of that, it was very different. These are the little things that we'll never know, no matter how much you study. And I, um, uh, Eleanor Onstrup, who wrote Governing Commons, really highlighted it in, in, in her book. She was a um, Nobel uh, laureate for basically looking at how to create systems which will facilitate um, well-being. And if you get a government person to go in and figure out how communities work really well, the second they go back to their desk, they're going to lose touch. The only way to figure out how to govern those areas is to have people who work in it all the time having the right to be able to change rules and regulations. Mm. So you get this moment of exaltation, you know, it's that <laughs> you install slow hands, and I don't want to belittle that, but I want everyone to remember that that moment of joy is just one second, and it's the process of getting there. Um, and that, 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 that feel that goes on beyond that photograph, because if they just get to go up on the panels to do some installation for two days, and that was it, and that was all their engagement, they're not gonna remember it, you're not gonna, everybody will use it in our, in our share offer, and, and you'll ask me, can I use that picture in our share offer, it gets everybody excited. But that picture's on their wall, in their room, and they love that picture, not because of the day they were up there, but because of you know, the four or five months that they were working. So, you know, you've seen this, it's, you know, the, the simple roofs, but out here you say, oh, there's a big community center that put on 30 to 60 kilowatts, or there's a big uh, facility that, yeah, sports center, but 200 kilowatts on, it's great. The city has lots of little bitty buildings, and the financial models aren't that good for little bitty buildings, because it's the, the cable runs and the inverters. But there are a great deal of little buildings. Let's go to the next one. Those are all 50 to 100 kilowatt systems. Those little buildings, one building, 60 people in, in the lower left hand, 150 in the right hand. But those are 50, 35, I don't have a pointer. But that's okay. Just to give you an idea, those are all 50 to 100 kilowatt systems, and those are all um, inner city states where they are seen as a problem, the state is a problem, the people in these states are a problem. So additionally, that's about 1,200 problems and actually what now is, is it's <coughs> for community-owned renewable energy projects that is heralded around the world as being ex exemplar of community initiative which delivers social change and inclusion of elderly and young people in works, apprenticeships, and skilling. Right? So that's 1,200 problems being addressed by, in total, about 200,000 pounds of investment from local people. Um, I really liked going after her because you've asked her a question which I'll then fly. You said, how much has been invested in those projects? Um, and where were the local people from? 
we're talking about 30 people, 30% 30 of the people in each one of the cooperatives living in those buildings. Um, the rest of them, 96% coming from within a mile and a half of the programs. And um, looking at probably uh, the most amount, this is a great one on numbers, if anybody's interested. This deals about the whole, you don't have money, so you won't invest. Can we get it for not you? Good? Is that really cheap enough? Should we have it at five pounds? Should we make it to venture? Throw it away. Because so here, here's the data. The data says that people who live in our states who have no money, who can invest for 50 quid, don't. They invest from about 125 to 3,000 pounds. Right? And some of them bring it in cash. I'm not asking. This is what's happening. So this idea that people are in poverty and we don't have any money, not want to invest in the local community is not the case. It's just different than that. So let's create a program that does address what people want. What people want is to be able to invest in the program. They want to know that they can invest for 50 quid. That's okay. Everybody gets it. There's no one has said, I want it to be less. I can't afford that. Because I've gone in and delivered energy efficiency programs in their homes and they have things that I don't have. <laughs> um, but that's not, the point is that the people do invest, and they invest, and local people invest, and they get engaged. So you can get people invested. <coughs> you don't need to go to a debenture, and I'm going to push this strongly because I really feel sure about this. Cooperatives are very different entities than the people who are providing you debentures, which are limited companies, and you don't have a say in that cooperative. You don't have a say in that company because you don't have a share. You don't have ownership of it. A cooperative, you have ownership. You have a say. One vote, one share. Yeah, I'm doing the cooperative movement I'm talking about. <laughs> My fist. <laughs> so an average when we reduce the 50 kilowatts, um, all the programs now we're trying to do 100 kilowatt systems. So within these 50 kilowatt systems that we ran, uh, for example, so one, two, and three, we get 50 kilowatts to run the pilot. Because we said, if we're going to run a pilot, we want to make it really simple and straightforward and deliverable. And that was easy. And now all the programs are 100 to 500 kilowatts. And they're on social action, but they're using they're breaking up 5, 10, 15, 20 buildings, and they're putting on you know, 10, 20, 30 kilowatts on those buildings. <laughs> so in this case, we had, we had shown there's a social, environmental, and financial return. And in that, you ended up having a, an amazing impact when you said, because a lot of times, you guys are doing more things than, than, than you're saying to the community, and more things than you're saying to the, to the councillors. So breaking it up in this way, and just saying, all right, buddy, we're going to give you everything you want, and I'm going to get everything I want as well. I'm just packaging it the right way. Um, so a 50 kilowatt system was giving 37 and a half kilowatts of generation. It was reducing 20 tons of carbon per annum, and it was delivering paid work experience for 10 people, 15 internships, energy audits where we were going in um, into the homes and delivering those services, 100 surveys, and we were having about 5,000 people engaged. And because you had six to seven months, you knew that. Don't be like, oh my god, I wish it was done faster. Uh, just be like, okay, probably gonna take us like 18 months to do this. So let's get a great program where we're gonna have a bounce. We can schedule these years ahead of time and see how many, how many people we can get, how many bouncy castles we can get for cheap. If I tell somebody I'm gonna want three bouncy castles a year for the kids to come to this program, and I want that for the next two years, they're gonna give you a better price when you go and put together a financial model, say the engagement process, right? So this was what we did for 50 kilowatt systems, and it's been bumping up for 100, 200 now. Um, now, the behind the scenes stuff does get pretty hectic, and I'm sure that any one of you who has been working on the behind the scenes things can understand that some of it's very difficult to deal with, and a lot of times community members are not interested in that piece. They're interested in looking at it and making sure it's dealt with correctly, but they don't have the time or the energy or the money to deal with the grid connection or the FSA compliance, or the or the export meters. I mean, you get a solar installation company to come in. I'm to tell you right now, they do not wrap up all the loose ends on the export meters and delivering direct supply and things like that. You, oh, it's like a whole other kettle of fish. But these are neat, and we have to say again. Here's the here's what we have to do. Okay, you've got the private sector coming in, delivering uh, solar, delivering energy efficiency. Whatever, it's fine. But that's not our problem. Our communities don't necessarily want solar panels only or just have traffic. They want to have the energy from the rooftop, from the wind turbine, from the, from the, the, the um, Archimedes crew delivering energy to their door. So working all that out and saying this is one of our major priorities, we have to sort of throw away all the shit to say, okay, that's fine. 
you can deliver that, but can you make sure that the expert leaders know that's dealt with? These are bigger issues that need to be dealt with, and that's what we were doing with the new power the saying, okay, all the community has everything in states that can deliver all these great things. You know your community better than I do, you'll know what they want. But there's certain amount of elements in the background that, that you might not have the time to deal with, or you might not want to deal with. Barbara's doing that here. Um, I'm sure that many of you are all doing it in your local communities, but that's what we were doing for our local communities. This idea around 2,500 hours for a solar project is about right when you start to work out all the different people and volunteer. It does seem a very big task when you're on your own. If there's two of you going, I really want to put some solar panels on a local school. 2,500 hours sounds like a lot. But when you get engaged and you put your guys and castle up at the school and you get someone to go in once or twice to talk about it, you get 10 more parents coming on regularly, it starts to be reduced because a problem halved again and again and again. You've got almost all of your end work is done for you because those people who would invest in the co-op, those people who are going to tell everybody about the co-op. Uh, the point of clarification, 2,500 hours, is that for one installation? Yeah, for, for one co-op, one co-op to deliver that level of community engagement and that level of... Um, uh, one project. Yeah, yeah. Um, these, are the these are the projects we're working with in London. Um, so Brixton is not on there only because I've just done that out of there. Brixton on there as well. Um, and there, these are programs that we're mentoring. So it's a distance. I mean, my team, the repowering team, made Brixton Energy. So these are groups that we are supported to deliver programs. It's sort of a different thing. We created a product, developed it, developed it right, tweak it, and rework it so that to, to make sure that we are prototype is always working. So that's why Brixton Energy. <coughs> Rosendale, Vauxhall, Hackney, Stratton, they're all programs that we're, we're working with local community groups to deliver. Um, so I wanted to do this, and many of you know this, but I always really felt it was important to really highlight how starting the group degree and vision mission is very important prior to, um, to going to the council. <coughs> um, and and that, that really ends up this, and I, I, I'm not sure how much of this I need to go in, because a lot of you seem like you're already there, and I'm, I'm working with hundreds of groups. <coughs> But that um, the green that vision is, is very important. Right from the outset, as I said, that vision that we had for the people that were living in Brixton was about um, uh, job creation and didn't feel poverty, make sure people were warm. Um, so defining those goals and objectives was key for us. Then you go to the council and say, look, we've got hundreds of people ready to vote. So you better listen very clearly to what I'm about to say to you. Get out of my way. Or I will run you over. <laughs> if you go there before you do that, they won't listen to you, and they'll smile and they'll nod and say, "That's a good idea. I agree. You know, I, I believe in what you're doing." But it doesn't have any gravitas. You need to be clear about what you're doing. The community doesn't not exempt from business modeling. It's not exempt from having a, a, a clear, decisive, directive objectives and somebody who knows what to deal with when they say, "Okay, fine. Please host your business model." And um, can you meet with the procurement team next Monday? You have to be able to go in there and say, here are our documents, here's what we're doing, this how we do it. This is a hundred place of lease agreement, it's been signed off, it's going back and forth to the lawyers, we can deal with it. We need to be able to be clear and concise that community doesn't mean that we're only hugging each other. And we know how to hug and win, but it means we know how to roll up our sleeves and deliver the projects that we can do when we were there. And that has to be very clearly, so you don't do that until you're ready to roll. So, um, it was the first on inner city properties and on social housing. Um, and now, that's, I mean, I can pretty much go and get rid of this slide in the sense that like, it's happening everywhere and everyone wants to get through it. The fact of the matter, though, is that in London, we're still, we're first at the airport. It just seems to be we're delivering it at that much faster rate. One thing I think that's on there, um, which is interesting, is the Brixton Pound, which is using local currencies. So people could buy their um, share of the Brixton Pound and then they can get returned in, um, which is Right, if you do know that's the first time it's ever been done, um, but it's a good thing, and I'm very happy that we're paying out our, our dividends. And it's such something we like it. The other thing was on the carbon trade, there was a couple of loopholes in the carbon energy savings program, which we actually set up as a carbon, a carbon trader and was able to sell some of the carbon um, that we did, which was great. And they, but they shut up. So I got a phone call. I got a phone call and said, How do you think you could do that? They explained when they shut up. 
but <laughs> that was sad, but I think it should be put back in personally because that would basically run all the projects that we ever have to do. Um, and it, there's no reason why Eon and, and why they, the energy companies can do it and we can't. Um, anyway, so just, it's very helpful to have to set the slide when you're trying to convince people because credibility has a great deal. And um, while well, images that, like I showed you of Kamal leading Aisha um, up there with their uh, drills on the top of the solar panel at this moment, this is years of, of <laughs> labor and struggling. Then you show that to the council, <coughs> this will be delivered. We can do that, we've done it here, we've done it there. You know, let's make it <coughs> it's very effective. I think what ends up happening a lot of times is um, what I try to start with is we get so absorbed in trying to put up solar panels or wind turbines or CHP or do retrofits and try to understand what the government was thinking when they produced the Green Deal. We forget about people who are living right on the corner and want their children to be born and educated and have the same rights that we have had and the privilege that we've had to have the chance to learn um, and uh, be able to select our own jobs. Um, and Shamsa's children had um, all been did solar panel making workshops. They were part of the house was draft group. They were one of the things on her roof. The solar panels went on. Her energy bill was reduced by 35% because of the draft group thing that was put into the um, And then another 50% because she had no idea under the refit program that the GLA pulled out how to even work the boiler. Because they <coughs> put the boilers in, but they didn't tell them how to use it. Their walls got covered in black mold, and it was, a, it, it was endemic that swept across London. Black mold. <coughs> Under, re, uh, under these programs where all the big CES programs came out, no one thought about putting in extra actor fans. <laughs> so it was this thing. So all of a sudden her house didn't have black mold and she had, um, and she knew how to use her boiler. I can't, it's just spending time. There's no way to get around this. So we have to rethink our models to develop them for people. So technology's great, but the phone and the computers and came here on using high speed technology, but we, we, they're not a problem. Communities aren't a problem. People aren't a problem. And when you deal with them in that way, when you co-produce things in that way, they say things like, I hope this goes to other states. No, I'm saving all this money on my energy bill. Can I save any more? They say, I hope this goes to other states. So, um, that's my last slide. And, um, how, do you, how do you resolve conflicts with decision making in the co-ops? Really I've issue. had problems working in co-ops, trying to get decisions, and it just drags out, <coughs> causing delays, and causing project collapse, because investors uh, have limited attention spans, and after three months, you lose your investment fund. Uh, and that happens to be last year, I lost a substantial investor because of delays, because of decision making. This is a real, that's a real issue, and I think it's really important, and I'm sure all of you would struggle with that. Um, what I'm proffering here is by addressing um, the community first in a way that they engage them in all elements of the program. Your investors are created prior to this so that when you come to make a decision and you have all of your, your goals and aims and ambitions down, um, they don't get up and walk out of the meeting. Now, people are people and they're always going to argue about something. And, um, that you can't, I'm not saying that uh, we don't have problems, I'm not saying that there aren't arguments, uh, but uh, to remember Newsflash, every boardroom of every private company has the same issues. And it might take a little bit longer to do that, but if you build in what the people who you're interested in working with to the process of making the co-op, you will find the money in different ways. If you go out there going, all right, I want to help these people, and I'm going to need this much to do it, so this much and ends up coming from people who think about money that way. And the people who usually line up to get helped in that way go in this little area. They don't like each other, they don't talk to each other, and they have their own timelines. Then you're in the middle going, I really want you guys to talk. Can I, can, can you just, can, can, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I, that's what ends up happening, and I'm totally sympathetic to all that. What this says is, throw away that idea, your investor pot will come as the people who are trying to help, and people who want to help them. And we'll understand how that works. 
if you deal with it in a different way and say and allow everybody to be inclusive, included in, in the whole process. And I'm not saying that you've done it wrong. I'm saying that the only way that we've learned how to do it is I've run into the same problems with you, and I still run into problems every week with co-operatives where they say, we want this, we want that, you know, how can we treat that? And just say, okay, let's work through it. Um, if someone says, I don't, I can't wait to invest anymore in your pro project because, you say, why? Well, because you're not helping people this way or whatever, then, then maybe they have to go. Um, I don't know the specific circumstances, but I'm saying that if you include mindset <coughs> and show them what they're going to get delivered, it's a very different arena because you have to, because there's if you deal with people in separate pots, then when it comes to agreeing in one pot, it it, it, it can get fouled. But it, if you have a major project, it can't be funded from uh, local communities. The local community can only support funding to a certain level, unless it's some of a very upper level. Uh, and then you have to go to the big funders. I think, I would definitely say that money is, is a very interesting subject. Um, there's seven trillion pounds of housing stock in the UK. Two trillion pounds are homeowner owned. Three trillion pounds are um, from councils. Two, two trillion are from local communities. Um, people have a pension cap right now. I don't know how many of you max out your pensions, but there is a heck of a lot of money in the UK. There is not a shortfall of money. Uh, the problem is good projects. I agree with that, absolutely. It, good. So don't, don't, don't. If project is there, you'll find money to carry. You made your project, and, and just to promote, and, and don't ever, it, it, the last thing you should be thinking, I know this is really bad. Sorry. The last thing you should be thinking about is the money. Really is the last thing. The money will come if you deliver, if you get your whole project. If you think about it from a perspective of communities from the outset, with a sturdy financial basis all the way through, you are not going to have a problem getting the money. Um, it's about communicating what you're doing and saying, if you say from the outset, look buddy, I'm really glad you're here. We don't have all the money from our communities. I'd love you to come to this, this meeting. We're going to be meeting every week for the next, whether it's a big project and you're talking about big wind or something, what are you talking about? Um, there's a, a community, it's building a new community in the along the valley, so there's housing, renewable energy, aquaponics. Okay, okay, um, it's, perfect. It's a 60 million, dollar, 60 million pound project. Perfect, exactly that. If you said from the outset, this is a big project, it's going to take a lot of years, here are the people that we want to make it for, here are the people who are going to do it, let's all start to meet regularly, right? Listen, you're a guy and you're somebody who wants to fund this, we're meeting every week on Thursday night at the pub. Everybody's invited, you can show up when you want to. If they're there, they get a feel of what's going on. If they're not, if, if, sometimes what we do when we kind of hold things and walk them through places, we end up holding this horrible thing, which you think is a nasty piece of work, and this person, that, 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 I'm not going to say uh, <laughs> council, this, this problem that's we're identified, I'm going to hold it, I'm going to try to walk through it very different. No, just say, here's this, this is the struggle, this is the thing we've overcome, put it on the table, everybody goes looking at it and goes, oh, I saw one of those last year. Oh, that's my aunt. Yeah, whatever it is, it's, all of a sudden, everybody you know, starts to take a piece and take hold of it, and you work it through. It's very difficult to, um, to create, you're creating something new. I mean, the, the truth of the matter is that we're doing stuff that hasn't been done in the UK. People go, oh, Germany, can we just like kill this Germany thing once and for all? <laughs> Germany has the largest amount of carbon emissions in, the, in Europe. They have the largest open source coal mine in Europe. They eat up the black forest every year at the same rate that biogases are eating up the, the, um, uh, the jungle in the Amazon. It's like catastrophe. So don't give me the whole thing about Germany. Let's just forget that. The Germans come, I have to go to to German television and interviews with them all the time. They're like, oh, the cooperative isn't working, the German cooperative isn't working, we really like this, model. you guys are here. And I was like, well, you know, gotta go back to Rothschild. 200 years ago. You know, it's just, it's, so let's just, let's just, uh, in Sweden, look, they made some good investments into um, infrastructure, in, into heating infrastructure, which is great, in the, after the war. Very good idea. We didn't do that, we should have. You know who did do it? Birmingham. 70 years of infrastructure that they're building on now, uh, on, on heat work networks. So we, we have plenty of information to go on. We're developing new things. Think about it a different way. Don't be afraid of the money but just respect the time that things take and include everybody in it. And then the problems get 
uh, much reduced. So that whole, that whole analogy about it, a problem halved with co-ops is way easier. It's like divided by 300 or 1,000. You, you have less of a problem, and then your investors don't run away. You're, you, they, they bring you people to deal with problems. Thanks very much. I'm going to have to do it.